Good evening and welcome to my home. Let's start out with a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this time together. I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are gathered listening to this word. Father, I ask that you speak to their hearts and reveal to them through Holy Spirit what this word means in their life and how they can get victory over every area of their life to know what was done for them, and what they can receive and hold on to. We just thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good evening. We have a word tonight and it's called the power in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is a powerful name. There is no other name, no other name that has as much power or authority as the name of Jesus. Amen. There's songs written, there's scripture written about the power in the name of Jesus. So let's start out with some scripture. I'm going to be reading to you from the book of John chapter 1 and verses 9 through 12. And this is out of the Passion Translation. For the perfect light of truth was coming into the world to shine upon everyone. He entered the world he created, yet the world was unaware. And who are we talking about? The light of truth. It was Jesus when he was born on this earth. They were unaware of who he truly was. Amen. He came to the people he created, to those who should have received him, but they didn't recognize him. Remember, they, the Jewish people had prophecies um, from, you know, prophets in the Old Testament. Of course, from the birth of Jesus on is the New Testament. But the Old Testament had prophets that prophesied about a coming Messiah and a king that would come. And they believed, the Jewish people believed, that that king was going to come rescue them, that he was going to be a military man, that he was going to defeat their enemies, which was the Romans at that time, and set them free from the bondage that they had lived under. That was their idea of what the prophecies meant. But they didn't know other than what they knew through their head knowledge, their wisdom, their understanding of what the word said, but they didn't have the inner understanding. And they felt so strongly that they knew exactly what was right, that they didn't allow God to just reveal things to them because they believed that that they were in control of everything through a mental work. They believed that word by word, you know, everything is not received by word. Some the the word is truth and the word is spirit. And so we not only receive the word, the written word, we also need to receive the spirit. And that the spirit gives life to that word and it comes alive in us. But the Jewish people, especially the leaders at that time, wanted control over everything. And so they believed in the written word and that was it. And there was no more. And you didn't ask for anything and you didn't seek for anything. But there were those people who were not satisfied with that answer. They believed that there had to be something more, someone more that was going to come and provide meaning to their life. Amen. In verse 12, But those who embraced him and took hold of his name, he gave the authority to become the children of God. Those who embrace Jesus as the Son of God, the one that God had sent to redeem us. They understood, they may not have understood everything about what Jesus was going to do, but they believed that he was the redeemer and that he would bring change in their lives and that he certainly did. Sometimes their lives weren't any easier because of who he was, but they certainly knew 
that he was with them, that he saw them as something other than slaves, that he saw them as true children of God. And he longed to teach them from the youngest to the oldest. He wanted them to know the truth about who God was, the Heavenly Father, and what he had sent him to do, and how he wanted the the bondage of sin broken over their lives so that their lives could be claimed by God the Father and they could join the family of God. He had so many things that he wanted to give us, but there were many in the world that opposed him because they were afraid of even the name Jesus, Yeshua, as, as is written in the Bible. Yeshua, the Messiah that would come, it was in all the prophecies. They all knew it, but they didn't know why he was coming. Amen. When I read this verse, I, I was praying about it, and I just sought the Lord on what does that mean when he gave them the power, the power and authority to become children of God. He gave them the ability to believe everything that Jesus represented and to put into practice what he taught in the power of his name, the power of the name of Jesus. You know, there, there are so, so many songs written about um, power in the name of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus and the authority of Jesus. But I just want to give you one scripture. And it's written a little bit differently in the Passion Translation. But whatever uh, version of the Bible that you have, it is still true. It's still strong. The words that Jesus, uh, that the Holy Spirit gave them to write down about the name of Jesus is ours to claim today. Amen. This comes from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17. And these miracle signs will accompany those that believe. They will drive out demons in the power of my name. They will speak in tongues. They will be supernaturally protected from snakes and from drinking anything poisonous, and they will lay hands on the sick and heal them in the power of Jesus' name. Where did Jesus get his power? His power came from his Father and our Heavenly Father, Father God. Father God gave Jesus his power and his authority when he was here on this earth so that he could accomplish everything that Father God sent him to do. And when Jesus ascended to heaven, he gave that power to those who would believe upon his name to become children of God. And as they became children of God, they would receive that same power to cast out demons to raise, to raise the dead, to heal the sick, and to that they would have that protection of the power so that the things that came against them, any serpents come against them or any poisonous thing, it would not harm them. Why? Because the power of God is greater than any other thing in this world. And the power is accessed through the name of Jesus. As we pray, as we believe, as we petition the Lord for things in our life and for uh, for healing, if we're interceding, we say, for, in the name of Jesus. And that unlocks that power. It's only in the name of Jesus that that power and authority is released and revealed in us. And as others see that in our life, they see that there's a difference in a head knowledge about who Jesus was and a heart knowledge knowing who Jesus was and what he provided for us, what he gave us 
when he ascended to be with the Father, and today that he cheers us on from heaven, interceding always on our behalf. He loves us, and he wants the very best for our life. Amen. Father God, I just thank you for this word. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Father, that you gave Jesus your power and he demonstrated it while he was here on this earth. And then after he left, he gave us the power, your power, to do the same things that he did and even greater. Father, help us to have an understanding of what this power means in our life, the power to overcome, the power to be victorious over every plan of the enemy. And Father, show us how to use this power for your glory and honor in Jesus' name. God bless you. I just, I believe that you are going to have a week filled with the power of God. That he's going to reveal himself to you. And as you speak in the name of Jesus, using his power and authority, you're going to see situations change. You're going to be changed inside and the situation is going to be changed. Have a wonderful week. I look forward to being with you next week. Good night.